Hello everyone, welcome to another video on PSE programming using codices. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to use R underline trick and F underline trick instructions in structured text. So after following this video, you will be able to, to know the concept behind the rising edge and falling edge detection instructions. You'll be able to use these instructions in an example, which is controlling the movement of cars in an underground parking scenario, as I will explain later. Then you will learn also how to prepare a simple visualization and test the code and later work on the extending of the code. All right, so first I start by explaining the concept behind these two instructions. Our trick, the rising edge detection instruction works in this way. First of all, it receives one input, as you can see here, input signal is provided on the right side and it provides one output, which is denoted by Q. Whenever there is a rising edge at the input side of the instruction, we will have a pulse generated at the output. And that pulse will be quite short, it will be for one cycle only. You can see that here the clock is changing, this is the input to the R3 instruction actually. So the, it changes from 0 to 1, we have a rising edge here, therefore we have one pulse here, short pulse. Then another rising edge happens here and we have neck, another pulse actually and finally we have the third rising edge for which we have a corresponding short pulse. In order to uh, use this instruction in PLC programming we need to uh, declare an instance of it. Here you can see how it is declared. So R trig inst is an instance of R underline trig instruction and in ST in the structured text it is used in this way the name of the instance then in parentheses we need to provide the input variable which is denoted as clock in this case and then we can access the output variable by this uh, notation so our trig instance dot q gives us the output variable f trig on the other hand works in a similar way the main difference is that it just detects the falling edge f here shows that we are detecting the falling edge Whenever there is a falling edge at the input side, we will have a pulse at the output. You can see three cases in which we have the falling edge for which we have the short pulse. It is declared in a similar way with F underline trick and it is used in a similar way as R trick, as you can see here. All right, now that we know the basics of the basic concepts behind the R trick and F trick, I'm going to explain you how to use it by following an example. So here we have a scenario in which there is a parking, let's say, in the, uh, at the basement, and there is a passage for the cars to enter or exit uh, from the parking. In the passage, we have a single lane. It means that only one car can move in one direction at a time. So if one car is entering, we cannot have another car going off because there is no space yeah, for them to move at the same time. So there is only one lane to enter to, or exit from the parking. Only one car can be in the passage at a time. He, these are the assumptions that we have. There is a pair of red and green traffic lights you can see here. So Y1, Y2 and Y1, Y2 here. The red light and green light at two ends of the passage which uh, tells the cars whether it's possible to enter to the passage or not. There's also a pair of photoelectric sensors at the two ends denoted by X1 and X2. These are uh, proximity sensors which will tell us whether there is anything in front of them or not. So with these sensors we will notice that a car is entering or a car is exiting from the parking. Initially we have the green lights on, uh, meaning that the passage is empty, we can have the cars entering or exiting. And then uh, depending on the situation we may have the red light on. So once a car is entered into the passage from any side, the green light will turn off and the red lights will turn on. And once the car goes out of the passage, the lights will go back to green. We assume that there's also a switch to reset the system to the normal state whenever needed. You can see how I have created the visualization. I'll show it in, in the run mode as well. But you can see here that I have created an image pool. In the image pool, I have these three images. This is the road, the traffic light, and then the car. Uh, I have placed two sensors, sensor 1 and sensor 2 here, with which I will simulate that a 
car is entering into the passage or it's going out of the passage and i also have this slider here which will determine the location of the car so i will as i move the slider manually the car will move on the road and then here we have the reset switch these are the cases that we will have so when we have car entering from sensor one side and exiting from sensor two side let's see what happens to the values that we have we, we would have for the sensors considering sensor one when the car enters into the passage it will be sensed by sensor one and as far as the car is in front of the sensor one the value that you will get from the sensor will be equal to true and once it moves away or continues moving the value from sensor one will go back to zero and it will remain zero if we have a r trick and f f trick instruction used with sensor one we will have these two pulses generated at these two times on the other hand when the car goes out from the sensor two side or from the uh, left side we will have this signal generated by sensor two and uh, for it again we will use the r trig and f trig instructions and we will get these two short pulses in this case when we have the movement of the car from right side to the left side these two pulses will be important for us because the first one over here will determine that the car is entered and the second one here will determine that the car has has gone out of the passage therefore we can turn on the green pilot light on the other hand when the car moves from left side to the right side these are the values that we will get from for sensor 2 in this case first and then sensor 1 and again these two pulses generated by the r trig and f trig will be important for us because they determine when the car has entered into the passage and when it has gone out of the passage so using this we will determine the state of the pilot lights here you can see the variable declaration area i have sensor 1 sensor 2 as booleans green light and red light as booleans r01 and r02 are the boolean intermediate variables that we will use in the code then we have reset as another boolean car position is in the form of an integer and then we have r trig and f trig declared two times one for sensor 1 and one for sensor 2 so these are all the variables that we need in this project and here you can see the structured text code you can see that it's not a complicated one it's kind of simple initially we kind of determine the input to the r trig and f trig instances you can see the notation here yeah? sensor 01 and r trig receives the input from sensor 1 sensor 02 and r trig receives input from sensor 2 and similarly for the other two then these intermediate variables are reset when we uh, press the reset button actually so this is used in order to do the initialization because with, with the value of r01 and r02 we will determine whether the red the green light should be on or off red light will turn on when r01 or r02 is equal to one so if any of these two intermediate variables will be equal to true red light will turn on otherwise green light will turn on then in this part of the code we are setting so s equal will set the value for r01 in this situation when we have the rising edge detector for sensor one uh, giving us the output equal to true and the green light is equal to one so this means that we have a green light already turned on and then a car enters into the passage from the sensor one side actually so in that case r01 will be set to 1 and this will eventually turn on the red light r02 will be set to true or 1 when we have the rising edge for the sensor 2 side and the green light is already on so if the green light is on and a car enters into the passage from the sensor 2, two side we will have r02 set to true and eventually the red light will turn on in this case now that we know how to set them we should also reset them eh? when do we reset r01 r01 will be reset when we have a falling edge from sensor 2 uh, we have a falling edge from the sensor 2 side let me go back here so falling edge so we have the falling edge from sensor 2 at this point and we know that r02 is equal to false if this is the case then r01 will be reset and as a result the green light will turn on and similarly in order to reset r02 we will 
uh, check out the falling edge from sensor 1 and the value for R01. If R01 is already equal to false or zero and we have a falling edge from sensor 1 side, then R02 will be reset and as a result, the green light will be will turn on actually. All right, so here you can see the visualization, the simple visualization that I have prepared for this project. As I already mentioned, I have, I have the image pool where I have imported an image of a road, the traffic light and the car. And then in the visualization, I have inserted them. So this is the road. Here we have, I have the car and I have the traffic lights. I also have this slider here to simulate the movement of the car. As we see in the runtime, I will move the slider in order to move the car. And therefore I have associated both of the car and the slider with a variable, which is the car position, as you can see over here in the properties window. That's the same. That's what I have for the slider and as for the car, I have it over here. So the absolute movement and X is associated with the same variable. Then I have two sensors. The first one is here. It's a push button. Both of them actually are push buttons. And I will show you how I will uh, use them. For each one, I have associated them with a variable. So sensor one for this one. And for the second one, I have associated with the sensor two Boolean variable. And I also have this reset switch here. You can see that the variable associated with it is the reset. Additionally, for the uh, traffic lights, I have placed the image, but on top of it, I also have placed these uh, pilot lights or the lamps. I have chosen the green and red as for the colors for both cases and I have associated each one of the lamps with the green light or the red light variable and now let me just uh, log in and run the the project so on the right side you see the visualization and on the left side you see uh, two parts the upper one shows us the value of the variables in real time and the lower one shows us the actual code now the the, the project is in in the run mode already i can start by moving the slider as you can see here and you see that as i move the slider the car moves together with that but nothing happens in terms of the state of the the lights what i need to do here is that when the car arrives in front of the sensor i just change the state of the sensor and then when it goes away i will change it again but you see as soon as i change the value for sensor one the red light started to turn on and the green light turned off. If I continue moving the car, now I assume that it moved away. So the sensor one provided us false value, as you can see here. And you can also check it over here. The sensor one is false now. And I can continue moving it until we reach here. So sensor two will give us true now. The red light is still on. And as soon as the car goes outside, sensor two gives us false and the green light turns on. I can move the car the other way around. Now red light is on. Red light is still on. And the car now goes out. And now the, the state of the lights changes. You can check the state of the variables or value of the variables over here as well once the the project is in the run mode and you are changing the the value for the sensor and and also for the for the slider all right yeah i think that's all for for this as i mentioned you can go through the lines of the code and see how the different variables are changing their values depending on the situation which happens here all right so now that you have learned how to how the instructions work and you have followed the example that I have provided, I think it's time for you to do something additional. I would like to ask you to modify the code to introduce the following situation. Assume that the traffic lights work independently on each end of the passage. So if a car enters into the passage from one side, the red light on the other side will turn on, and a second car can follow the first car and enter into the passage from the same side. It means that if a car enters from the right side, then the red light on the left side will turn on. So no car can enter into the passage from the other side. But from the same side, we can have another car following the first car, okay? Which makes sense. So as far as we have cars entering from the right side, they can follow. The, the green light will be on for them, but for the other side, it will be uh, the, the red light will, will be on. 
And also please update the visualization to have the sensors change their value automatically depending on the location of the car which will be determined by the slider. You can apply these two changes and update the project. Uh, Alright, so that's all for this video. Thank you for watching this video and hope to see you soon in another episode. Bye for now.